In this video, we're going to explore painting with weathering powders. Weathering powder is obviously fantastic for showing rust and dirt and grime and mud and all sorts of things on miniatures, on vehicles, whatever. But uh, I always thought, could you just paint an entire miniature with those? And at the time, I was... I was starting to supplement some of the blending on my miniatures by using powders. And then I just I did this experiment. This is a cool mini or not figure. And I, at first I painted the base all with the pigments. And I liked that so much. I thought, well, let's see what happens when I paint the whole miniature with powders. Now, of course, powders tend to be a little bit... Uh, not quite uh, the bright very saturated colors like you see with miniature paint. There's, there's really no saturated colors here. They tend to be more muted. And if you're looking to do more of a muted uh, paint exercise, well, then uh, this might be the perfect thing to try. You can get the full range of lights and darks, as you can see. Uh, it's, it's very different to paint with than, say, your standard miniature paint. It's a little bit more, in a way, like pastels. Now I've got a whole bunch of the pigments out here. It takes it takes a fair amount, uh, but you can still blend these pretty well. I have a white and black for obvious uh, reasons to kind of lighten things, darken things. And then I've got a collection of greens, some browns, some reds, some yellows, and some blues. And we'll use each of those together to try and uh, complete this exercise. There are actually, you see this has armor on it, there are some metallic weathering powders. I know uh, Secret Weapon makes one. All of these are in fact Secret Weapon pigments because they're just such a nice variety. The next thing I'm going to do is talk about the fixer and the rubbing alcohol that we'll need. This is a product that Secret Weapon Miniatures released a few months ago. What this will do is actually seal your powders to the figure. Once you use this, the powders aren't going to go anywhere. You can use Dill Coat and, and spray over your powders. But this is more a direct application. And I had discovered it actually lets you do some more things. It's not just from sealing your colors. It also lets you blend a little bit more. So this is a, this is a really important thing. And I try to keep a few containers. These are just the lids of jars, milk jars, water bottles, whatever. They make nice little temporary containers for your fixer. You see, this stuff, uh, you can't put it out on the pallet. It's just going to get all over the place. And there's really not enough of it to put in a giant bowl. I do have a small little container like that. That'll also work, but even that is still kind of big. I like these small containers also when I need to get at the stuff. It can be right on the pallet where I need it. It's small. I can dip the brush in and out. So... So I like to keep these around. There's one other item that we'll need, and that is rubbing alcohol. This is more for doing some of the finer details. Basically, it thins this stuff down, makes it more like a liquid, and that's where we can do some of these finer lines. And that's, that's essentially what we're trying to do, is turn these powders into liquids temporarily. Because the fixer, that dries pretty fast. The rubbing alcohol dries really fast. It just evaporates. So, what I'm going to do is try out painting this base. Before we get to the miniature, I'm going to paint a base show you how some of the colors work, and we've got this kind of marble finish here. We can experiment. I can show you a few 
ways to, to use this stuff. Use it dark to light, light to dark. So that'll be our first that'll be our first task. One other thing uh, before I forget. This is a disposable palette and with a very, very messy this is going to be a little bit messy with these powders. I think you're not going to want to use... Well, your wet palette's really not going to work, for one thing. But I would suggest a disposable palette like this. It's basically a pad of paper with a sheet that, when you're done, you can just tear it off and throw it away. Just for this project, who knows, we may go through a couple of these sheets. Because this stuff, it spreads out pretty quick. Uh, unlike paint where you can keep it more manageable. I think this this stuff just by its nature and because you're mixing in the fixer and the rubbing alcohol it tends to spread out a little bit more. Now the brushes that I'm going to use are for the most part pretty small. Uh, we're not going to get much past the liner brush. We may use a few of my craft brushes like this for some of the bulk work but mostly it's going to be liner brushes I like the liner brushes as opposed to the spotters because these these, these uh, bristles are about twice as long as a spotter brush the size is the same as far as the point but the length is about twice as much and it's really important here be able to hold as much of the pigment as possible in the brush. I've got the colors all arranged out on the palette. The black, the white, our greens over here on this side. A couple of those browns into the reds, the yellows, and the blues. Now in this blue container here, since the label of the Rubbing alcohol was blue. We've got rubbing alcohol here, and this clear container is the pigment fixer. Now, so with our base, what we want to do is use a little bit of, I think, these two colors right here. This is the burning sands, a little bit of the slate gray. And put this right around here in our rocky section. And then what we'll be doing is actually taking the rubbing alcohol and the blacks and darker colors and actually you can use them like almost like a wash. So what I'm going to do is take this And I'm going to adhere it to one of my empty paint jars. I'm going to secure it with a little bit of blue tack. And I'm going to take a little bit of the, the slate gray and the burning sands. Start to bring these together. Now you can see there's not much mixing going on. Well, there's a few ways that you can turn that more into a liquid. And you can see when you mix them with the rubbing alcohol, it turns into a liquid. This is a liquid that's not going to last very long. You have to, that's something that you have to remember as this pigment only lasts so long because rubbing alcohol dries pretty rapidly. Sometimes I just will throw a little bit of the alcohol just right into some of the pigment. Now see how that turns darker? That's something that you actually have to ignore. Yeah, that, that's a hard thing to do because when it dries it will dry lighter. See what I'm doing? I'm just taking some pigment. A little here, a little there. Going back and forth between the two. 
every so often using some of the rubbing alcohol to turn this into pigment. You can even take a little bit of the white and lighten this up. And see how I really can just paint with this stuff. It's uh, it was very unexpected. And I'm just using a filbert brush here. And so flat brush that has rounded edges. And it's kind of perfect for this sort of work. And it's not uh, it's not really a dry brush because well look at how look at how wet that paint is. I have to keep in mind you can see some of the uh, rubbing out is already dried. It's already evaporated. So we've got, got this just about to where we want it to be for some of those washes that we'll do. I'm going to leave this alone for right now. Make sure that kind of dries fully. And I want to think about the top of the base. I wanted to get some of this marble finish. Now something that has an entirely different property is the sealer. Got some of the green. I'm going to mix this with the slate green. This does sort of change your color a little bit. I've noticed that uh, it doesn't dry quite as light as the original. But this also stays a little wetter for a little longer. So I'm going to set this on end like so. Take some of the white. Mix that in. What I've noticed is that the fixer allows you to, it tends to make the colors blend together just a little bit better. Let's uh, get a little yellow into that mix. See how I can, I can literally just, it's like I'm just painting. And see how I can actually blend and wet into wet to make that a bit softer. And you can you can see the uh, the paint is it's staying active a little bit longer. What I've done with the rubbing alcohol that's mostly that's mostly dry already. And get a little more of the white. Mix that in. I can thin that down with more of the fixer if need be. And I can see how I can just blend like this now. The difference is this is permanent. This is, it says it's fixer and it does. It, this is now permanent on this part of the base. This stuff, see how that just wiped off? See how that wipes off on my hand? This has not been fixed yet. But we're not done here. We're going to put our washes over the top. But this part, I'm not going to do a lot more to it after this, after this stage. So I just, uh, so I'm using the fixer here. You can see it lets you do some nice, 
soft feathery effects. Sometimes I actually have a third container of rubbing alcohol. And when we do the, the miniature, I'm going to definitely set up a third container. And that's what you use to clean the brush because water is not going to clean your brush. I use rubbing alcohol to get paint out of my brushes anyway, so that's not that big a deal. So here's some, some white. You can see I can work in a relatively thin line. And every time that I go back to the panel, you can look and see how this is still wet. And guess what? By introducing some more of the medium here, some more of the fixer, it reconstitutes the color, it reactivates it. That does not happen with the rubbing alcohol. You throw more rubbing alcohol into it, it just, that doesn't work. I'm just throwing a little bit of this green down here, almost like it's moss. Just to reflect some of the colors from the top of the base. Now, if I wanted to get my colors a little bit darker, I can take a little bit of the black here. Mix it in with some of that green. And let's put a few accents on our marble here. There and there. Some more dark over here. And if this is another thing I've noticed, if the fixer is still wet, it's still wet here on the on the surface, you can uh you can blend that wet in the wet style. That that was just kind of a bit of an accident that I discovered. See here I can take some of my lighter green. Blend that together if I want to. So it's possible to get obviously very, very thin lines even with the powders. But it's a little bit easier to kind of fade out lines like this. than it is with regular paint because in, in effect you are sort of working with a pastel. So what I wanted to try now, speaking of the black, I'm going to take a lot of the rubbing alcohol, mix it with the black, I'm going to also have some of the, this is green earth. So just like this, yeah, I'm, this is uh, essentially creating a wash. There is another way uh, to get, say you want to get some of that rubbing alcohol. And this is just a brush protector. You see me use this a lot, especially when we're doing the miniature itself. I just needed to get a lot of liquid over there pretty quickly. So as you can see, what I can do is by using the rubbing alcohol, it, it's basically creating a wash. But in effect, it's more like a glaze. Those control glazes that I'm so fond of talking about. See, I'm going to have it go over the top. See how watered down that is? But 
can see it's not affecting this this core is not breaking down the way this is and I was planning on some of the colors when I applied the rubbing alcohol like this just as water over the top I counted on some of those colors kind of breaking down and then blending together I'll just uh, finish off this base and then we can get to our miniature because uh, we have lots to do. I just wanted to show you a few of these techniques to kind of introduce you to these powders and what they can do. And, and they really they really are a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think uh, you'll enjoy trying these. Maybe all you use, maybe all you do is just on, on bases. That's the only time you ever do this technique. Maybe it's not something you want to do on a miniature, but even just that. Well, look at how fun that is. I'm, I'm very tempted to actually paint just about all of my bases this way. Because look at how, you know, the variety there, how it just really sinks in to that cork and gravel. I'm just going to finish this thing off and then we can get to our miniature and try some of these same techniques.